All right, y'all, what I'm doing is I'm just coming through here and cultivating. What I'm just pulling up the grass and weeds that germinated near these tomatoes. Now, I have come and clipped some of the bottom leaves of these tomatoes already. And I'm going to go ahead and disrupt the ground in between all of this. And that, what that does is that just makes it to where all those little weeds growing are going to die. Fertilizer. There's a lot of people out there. Fertilizer, no-till, till, uh, no cultivation, cardboard, uh, back to eating, mulching, all of this stuff. They, they all work. Every single one of those methods works. They all work well. If that's your way of doing things. My way incorporates my way is not your way. But look at my way and see if it has something that can add to your way. Y'all saw, y'all saw how I made my piles and piles of compost videos. And I've been doing that. Go back in time. If you want to really go back, go back and look at some of my old videos. I've been doing that for years and years, making compost like that. But I guarantee you, people out there have to compromise with the ways of fertilizing. You have to have a compromise. If no one way works all the time. Maybe one way works on one homestead, but it doesn't work that way. It's not a blanket throughout the uh, entire homestead community. What works for me? And I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I love making piles and piles of compost. Organic, rich of the earth, grass clippings, leaves collected chicken manure, horse manure, a refuse here and there that I say I, that I put in the compost, uh, old vegetables, something, garbage, crawfish shells, shrimp shells, fish heads. I put it all in there if I have to, but mostly the three ingredients that I, grass clippings, leaves, and some kind of manure, chicken manure, horse manure, or both, or just dirt, or just dirt that I dug up out of the ditch I clear the ditches and I go put it in the pile that's good enough good enough work works fine but I also use commercial 
grade fertilizers and this is one I'm getting ready to put down right here calcium nitrate I don't know if y'all getting that and that's if showing tomatoes in blossom end rot helps prevent blossom end rot so calcium nitrate so I'm getting ready to put that down and that's a commercial fertilizer and I also put down triple 13 I put down 82424 I put down straight 33 percent nit 330012 nitrogen sulfate I put that down you got to use the application of fertilizer accordingly and there's more than enough videos out there to tell you where to use it for the tomatoes today though I'm putting down calcium nitrate and usually after that after I put you put that down when it's first starting to show the blossoms and they're coming in you want to get a good calcium push to them and you this is the thing in order for them to take up that calcium that I have to have in there it has to be the pH that they want so I, I my recollection is a pH for tomatoes is six six point five somewhere up in there maybe even toward neutral of the pH system but what you got to do is you got to lime. I have acidic soil, so I have to lime. If you have alkaline soil, basic soil, you have to acidify it. So you have to uh, copper sulfates and stuff like that. It's the different ways to do it. But uh, wood ash, hard wood ash, like if you burn your fire, take your, put, put it up, uh, wood burning stove, put the ash out on here. That'll, that'll take acidic soil and make it alkaline or basic. If you want to acidify soil, which I used to live on a very alkaline soil in the swamps, you'd have to add, I remember copper sulfate was what we put, and you know what, it never really worked for me. I mean, but the good thing was that alkaline soil really grew tomatoes great. Blueberries could never grow, but tomatoes, woo, I grew them like a champ. I grew best tomatoes in the world over there, and that's what I'm trying to, I lime this soil, I make it alkaline. You got to have the right pH for it in order for it to uptake the nutrients it needs. And it, tomatoes want that calcium. They really are a, 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 um, a big calcium user. So in order for them to pull up that calcium, you got to have the pH right for the roots to pull it up. So you got to balance your soil. A lot of people promote doing uh, soil tests. Hey, look, I kind of know. I've been around enough to know where my soil is. I kind of watch what I grow and where I'm growing it and how it reacts. Kind of know what I'm doing. Over years, it takes a few years to do it, but you kind of figure it out. I don't do soil tests. I mean, I'm a scientist. I can do my own, and I have done my own. I've tested my own soils before. Not here. I haven't done it here. I've done it up at our other place, and it's nothing to it to do it. It's nothing more than what the uh, ag sensors are. The, when you submit your samples to the colleges or anything like that to test your soil, it's nothing different. They do basically the same kind of soil analysis you can buy and test yourself. You just got to use good technique in doing it. And you got to use multiple samples. You got to do different areas. But I don't do that. I'm, I'm pretty good at assessing what I've done. I, I figure it out year over year how to do it. And this is my... Fifth, fifth, sixth year doing it here, I got it pretty much figured out. Lime, it's just like I did at uh, my other place that's a few miles north of here. Add lime, a big jolt of it at first, and then after that, a little bit every a little bit every year works. If you don't have lime, do wood ash. You could use different supplements. I've even used slag, uh, basic slag. There are places you can get that. It's, it's just different things you can use to change the pH. But what you want to do, when you're using commercial fertilizers in conjunction with the organic, they both work together. And why not use them while you have them? But I like to learn. I have little areas I test where I just use one or the other and where I just use the organic. And I like trying to just test that out. And I'll tell you what, the organic way of doing things really works well. I mean, I think our Creator gave us all the tools we need 
without having to go to uh, artificial mean, I guess, to, to get there. We can get there naturally. It's harder and it takes more time to work, but you can do it. But while, but while we have the, uh, the means to have commercial fertilizer, I like using them. And I don't use them to excess, that's the thing. Do not use anything to, uh, to gluttonous excess. Don't use it to that. But if you use them in moderation, they work just fine. And I have commercial fertilizers that I like to use. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get kicking on this. I'm gonna go ahead and get cultivating. I got a trellis, I got a fertilize, got a lot to do. So I just wanted to put that to y'all about fertilizers. Don't go overboard on anyone's method. Learn it for yourself. Look at what other people do. Incorporate it. What makes sense to you. What makes sense in your mind, that's what you do. And if it doesn't work, then you just learn something. Remember that. Remember what didn't work and then move on to something else. Something's going to work for you. And we're not so far <laughs> off of what worked 20 and 30 years ago that we can't figure it out. You don't have to freaking ask for freaking lightning bolts and cosmic auras and, you know, the sun and moon tell line. <laughs> wow. That just makes me laugh. Don't, don't plant when the moon is here, plant when the moon is there. You look, if it makes that much of a difference, I have never seen it in my life that that, that kind of stuff makes that much of a difference. If where the sun and the moon are, well then, man, light your incense, hum your song, sit in the lotus position, and man, have at it. But if you want to just do, like me, when I get off of work and I have an opportunity to do something, I'm going to go do it. That, this is the day it gets done. Whether, wherever the moon and the sun and the stars are that day, that's where they're at. But this is the time I got to do it. Because the rest of the time I had something else to do. So, <laughs> get me off on another tangent. Anyway, I'm getting myself off on another tangent there. Anyway, just how fertilizer. Let's stick with that. And fertilize however you want to do it. incorporate different methods stick with one but whatever you want to do watch those videos watch those channels that use it incorporate it into what suits your climate your terrain your homestead and use it and be happy whatever the returns are if they're not good it's a learn it's not a fail it's a learn it might it might be a fail but it's a learn You've learned what to do. Okay? Alright, y'all. Oh, I'm hearing some weird stuff happening over here, so I gotta go check that out. I'll talk to y'all later. Thank you. There you go. Total nitrogen, 15.5%. Total calcium, 19%. But that's the NPK you see on the front, so they don't show the calcium. But I got it right here in a, in a uh, bucket. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this Warren hoe. Before I do the first trellis, and these, these are starting to put out flowers, and they're getting ready to start blossoming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and, I'm going to come and uh, pull a, right next to them, I'm going to pull a little dirt away. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Each individual one. I'm going to do this to all of them. I'm going to do that to every one of them. And there's no real method. I'm going to have to put it down to show you. I just grab some in my hand and I just throw it in there. And then I'm going to grab, you know, not much, 
And then what I'll come and do with the hoe after, I'm gonna show you with my, I'm gonna show you what's here. After I do this to all of them, I'm gonna come back with the hoe, and I'm gonna come and pull the the dirt over the soil dirt. I, we call it dirt. It's dirt. Call it dirt over it, and it'll have a shot of fertilizer. So I'm gonna do that to all of them. Right now. Okay, y'all. Alright y'all, I'm about to put down the Florida Weave type thing. It's a variation of the Florida Weave. It's not really a Florida Weave. It's how I do it. It's very similar. It's basically a Florida Weave, but I don't go weaving in and out. I just go to one post to the other. And that's what I'm going to do with these tomatoes and the peppers right here. Alright y'all, y'all can kind of see how my trellising is done now. It's a Florida weave, but it's not a weave. Goes post to post. My, this works for me. This works just fine for me. And uh, if I have to weave later on or put another post in, I will. But you see how this one kind of got a little crooked? It'll right itself. So that'll be good. And uh, these tomatoes are right there, ready to start putting out tomatoes. They're beautiful, they look good, everything is looking right. I want y'all to know, when I make these videos, I'm uh, when y'all see them, y'all about a week, a week and a half behind. So they really, they really, by the time y'all see these videos, it's gonna look good. Look at, look at the flowers on that. That's a uh, chocolate beauty. My wife bought these. I didn't see these. She bought them. She really wanted these so bad. So I said, I'll grow them for you, babe. And you know what? I might save a few seeds from them. But I got some bayonets in there. And I got the one jalapeno. Look. The jalapeno is actually making the, uh, this one broke off. I put it in the ground. I doubt it'll go, but let's see if it roots. If it roots, I'm going to let it go, and I'm going to put it somewhere else later. But, uh, yeah, that one's going to go. It's, that's going to grow big and tall. Yeah, y'all. So, everything's looking good. Let me get the rest of these, uh, 
strings up I'm whooped I'm tired it's been a long it's been a long afternoon I've been I've done a lot I got a, I got so much stuff I could film and I got so much stuff I could put look there's a I'm gonna say this right now and I'm gonna, I look, I'm gonna put it up here so look uh, one of them things I'm gonna say real quick batteries running down uh, my sister and my niece love that I started doing these videos where I talk on them. They said it looks good. I don't know. I think I don't look too good. But it's okay. Um, but one other thing I want to say about Homestead, and I might do a better, a, a more in-depth video on this. We all can't be full-time homesteaders. I have a full-time job, a way full-time job. I do a lot of overtime. So, what I want you to look at, one one of the emphasis I want you to put on my channel is doing this with someone that's got a full-time job. A lot of people cannot believe that I do the homestead like I do. I'm not a full-time homesteader, but I'm learning it. And people I work with in the city, they just don't understand it. You can do this. You can do this with a full-time job. You just gotta be dedicated. And that's what I am. This is my hobby, this is my fun, but it's also what I think might be later on some kind of life-sustaining thing. So, if you are worried that you can't do this because you have a full-time job, let me tell you, you can do a lot more than what you think you can do. And I'm, I'm a kind of living proof of it. I, if, I don't put everything I have on tape, I promise you. I set back a lot of food, a lot of food. I have no worries. If the apocalypse came tomorrow and I had to, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And most of it has been because I've been practicing and training in homesteading. Do that, practice and train in homesteading. Don't worry about what other people say you can or can't do. I'm living proof. You can do a lot of homesteading, even with a full-time job and working a lot of overtime. And with a family, and with even people in the family. My wife loves that I do this, but she don't participate. So I can do it by myself. You can do it by yourself. It might be harder for a woman because, I mean, there's a lot of physical things that take strength, like dealing with tractors and picking up everything. But I, I'm thinking a lot of women could do this by themselves, too. I, I'm, women are amazing me every day with some of the stuff they're doing with learning how to do things to get around having a man in their life. You know, wow. More power to y'all. Anyway, I'm going to sign off here. This is where I'm going to go do some other stuff that I just ain't going to put on video. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching.